from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Bob Lauder, Johnny. Trite State Guarantee. Hiya, Bob. Been a long time. Uh, I wish it were a longer time. Uh, nothing personal in that, is there? No, no, just bad temper. I'm on the prod, Johnny. We had a pearl necklace swipe, and it's got me irritated. Does the same thing to an oyster, the way I hear. Yeah, but in reverse. If an oyster gets irritated, he makes a pearl. I lose a pearl, I get irritated. <laughs> right now, I'm irritated 38 pearls worth. Say it in money. 20,000 clams. Ever hear of Smiley Prowl? Smiley Prowl. Oh, sure. Small-time jewel thief. Couple of raps. Haven't heard of him lately, though. Well, you're here now. He phoned us from Ohio an hour ago. Says he's got the necklace and wants to talk a deal. Who's your client? Girl named Melba Crane. A real snooty tooty, the way I get it. Owns a town or something. Anyhow, it's named after her family. Cranesburg, Ohio. Well, if I can find it on the map, I'll see about a plane reservation. Don't bother, Johnny. You already got one. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Tri-State Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Cranesburg matter. Item one, $105.35, incidentals in Hartford and transportation to Cranesburg, Ohio. I checked into the hotel, the Crane Hotel, incidentally, and per instructions, waited for contact by one smiley prowl jewel thief. That Crane name was beginning to run out of my ears, so for the moment at least, I postponed calling on the family itself. As it happened, though, the family came to me. Or at any rate, one of them did. Come in. My name is Phineas Crane, Mr. Dollar. Uh, May I... Oh, sure, sure. Come on in, Mr. Crane. Thank you, sir. You're related to Miss Melba Crane? Melba is my niece. And the necklace belonged to her? That is correct. It was her own personal property, not a part of any family holding. Oh, I see, well, sit down, won't you, Mr. Crane? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Just who constitutes the uh, family you mentioned? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Dollar, only Melba and myself now. We're the last remaining survivors. Uh, oh, now I see you're unpacking, sir. But you just go right ahead and forgive my intrusion. Well, yeah, you did catch me a little by surprise. I just got in town a few minutes ago, and I wasn't expecting visitors. Uh, Mr. Lauder of the insurance company wired that you were coming, and I was waiting here at the hotel. Oh, I understand the thief has approached you. Well, no, not me personally, no. He phoned the main office in Hartford and talked to Lauder. I see. I'll probably hear from him sometime this afternoon. Uh -huh. Now, you say he, Mr. Dollar. Are you certain the call was from a man? Lauder was certain. Do you have some reason to doubt it? Oh, no, oh, no, no, not at all. I, I just wondered... The name he gave is a known jewel thief. Several previous convictions. Smiley Prell. Yes, oh, is that, oh. And the call was made from here in Cranesburg. Yeah, that's right. Is that, well, that's very remarkable. Why so? Well, this is quite a small town, as you've no doubt noticed. Now, a stranger would draw attention. It'd be somewhat uh, conspicuous. Oh, not necessarily. Smiley may have come here some time ago to establish himself. You may even have met him, Mr. Crane. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm quite sure that I was well, utterly impossible. Did Lauder wire you a description? Uh, no, no, of course not. Then how can you be so sure? Uh, well, I uh, I just haven't met any strangers in the last few months. Not a one. Oh, I see. <clears throat> well, I am now at home. Can I uh, can I order you up something from the bar, Mr. Crane? Uh, the, oh, no, 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 thank you. No, I really have to run on. I only stopped in for a minute. <clears throat> Did you have anything special in mind? Oh, no, 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 nothing at all. I, I don't believe you, Mr. Crane. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir? Well, I just don't believe you. You care for a cigarette? A cig oh, no, 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 thank you. I, I never smoke. Uh, and I, uh, I must say, I fail to understand your implication. You understand I... it all right. Mr. Dollar, I'm afraid... Now, what is it, Mr. Not... Crane? Is there something phony about the loss of that necklace? Certainly not. Then what's up? I merely came here to offer my help... And Melba's, too, of course. 
I wanted you to know that we'll be glad to cooperate fully in any action you may choose to take. That's very generous of you. And your niece. My niece? Well, uh, she's a very remarkable girl, Melby. Oh? Yeah, she's a trifle headstrong at times, of course. Uh, not always inclined to use the best judgment. Uh -huh. How has she shown this lack of judgment, Mr. Crane? Oh, there's nothing specific at all, but I, I did want you... Uh, I did want to see you before you talk to her. You understand? And <laughs> let you know kind of what to expect, as you might say. Well, naturally, she's very upset over the loss of her necklace. I imagine. Uh, you don't have any hope, I suppose, of recovering it? Well, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of hope of recovering it. Possibly within 24 hours. Oh, I see. Oh, well, no. Certainly, Mel would be very happy to hear that. It was an engagement gift, you understand, uh, from her fiancé, Dean Sellers, his name. Oh, you know, she was quite broken up when it was stolen. Well, a $20,000 necklace is a pretty fair loss. Now, Mr. Crane... Oh, it's you... not the intrinsic value at all, Mr. Dow. No, I suppose not, since that part of it is covered by the insurance. Well, yeah, oh, that's quite so. But I was referring to the sentimental attachments, you understand. Oh, naturally. And, of course, to the sheer beauty... Oh. It was lovely, Mr. Van. You've seen the necklace, I suppose. No, but I've got photographs of it. Oh, yes, of course, yes, from the insurance company. Yeah, yeah. it's quite an unusual ornament, with each pearl set individually in a platinum mounting. And the whole thing is... Oh, pardon me. Johnny Dollar. This is you know who, Mr. Dollar. Is it all right to talk? Yeah, go ahead, shoot. All right. You know where the Green Lion Bar is? I'll find it. Well, meet me there, then, in an um, hour and a half. Check. And I won't have it on me, Dollar, so don't go smarty pants on me or you'll be holding the sack. You, you, I just want you and me, you understand? No cops, huh? I've been in this game a long time, Chuck. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'm counting on, so I'll see you later. That was the thief, I presume? <sighs> so he says. Well, I've got to be running along now. If there's anything I can do... Well, Mr. you can Donner, finish what you were saying yeah. about your niece, if you will. Oh, no, no, it was nothing, really, not at all. I see. Uh, it's just that Melba is a bit too uh, impulsive at times. Oh. <laughs> Headstrong, you know. She's young and she's foolish, but she never means any actual harm by it. I, um, no, not really, she doesn't. Now, I, I, I'm sure you understand that, Mr. Dollar. So, a uh, good day, sir. <laughs> Item two, $26 even, deposit and first day's rental on a hired car. I checked on the location of the Green Lion, 15 minutes from the center of town, so there was plenty of time to follow up another angle before I went to meet Smiley Prell. I parked the car in front of the Cranesburg Bank, went inside and presented my credentials and a letter of introduction to Milton Borkley, president. Uh, step inside the office, Mr. Dollar. We'll have a little privacy at least. Thanks, Mr. Borkley. Uh, have a seat. All right, thanks. Any any recommendation of Bob Lauders is good enough for me. He handled a lot of investments for Tri-State. A fine company. Nice company to work for. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Dollar? Oh, it's uh, just the usual routine check in cases of this kind. The general financial status of the Crane Bunch. You mean the Crane Chemical Company or the Crane family? Well, I assume the two went together. No, no, not for several years now. Melba's father sold the last of the family stock a while before his death. Neither Phineas nor Melba have one cent of ownership in the company. I see. Now, the company, of course, is in excellent financial condition. It's the uh, family we're concerned with. Well, there the picture is a little different. The fact is that although they're the social leaders of the town and everybody figures they're rolling in it, the cranes are broke, flat broke, have been for a couple of years now. But as I understand it, they live at quite a fancy estate out on the edge of town. Sure, and it's mortgaged to the hilt. Hmm. That's very interesting. Of course, uh, lately, old Phineas seems to be going around with a pocket full of money. I don't know where he got it. It is a funny thing. How lately? Since the necklace was stolen? Or before? Oh, long before. Two or three months. Uh, the robbery was only last week. Supposedly, at least. No, I see what you mean, but it's not the answer. Melba wore those pearls to the country club dance just a few days before they were taken. Well, it was an idea. I'll give you a piece of advice, Mr. Dollar. Have more than just an idea before you get too rough with Melba Crane or her uncle. Oh? Yeah, money or no money, they're still top society here. The local aristocrats. And the town kind of takes care of its own. Well, as I said, this is only routine. I don't have the slightest bit of evidence that the Cranes are trying to pull an insurance swindle. 
But I get paid to be suspicious, that's all. Mm-hmm. Well, I've wondered myself where Phineas was getting the money. Any ideas about it? No, not unless he's been borrowing from his prospective son-in-law. Dean Sellers, the lad who gave Miss Crane the pearls? Yes. How is he fixed financially? A man who can afford a $20,000 engagement gift? Yeah, we can assume he's eating regularly, I suppose. Well, actually, I don't know too much about him. He's an out-of-towner, came here about eight months ago. Doesn't bank with me. I see. But I will tell you one thing. If he doesn't have money now, he certainly will have before long. <laughs> he's a go-getter, that boy. Yeah, he must be. Here eight months and engaged to the town bell. Oh, he's a whirlwind. Keeps six or eight projects going all at once. For instance, real estate, business promotion, one thing and another. So busy, he even had to postpone the wedding. They were supposed to get hitched three weeks ago. Of course, I hear that that may be due to, uh, well... Due to what? Mr. Dollar, this whole thing is odd enough just on the basis of facts. The rumors, I think we'll skip. I'm uh, sure you understand. <laughs> That was the second time I was supposed to, quote, understand, unquote. Phineas Crane was sure I could understand about his niece. And banker Milton Borkley was equally certain about the rumors. As a matter of fact, I understood less about the whole thing than I did when I first got in town. I wasn't getting anywhere. I was losing ground. Item three, $1.40, two dry martinis in the Green Lion Bar while I waited for Smiley Pro. He was 20 minutes late, but he finally showed up, slipped into the back booth across from me. Are you, uh, your dollar? Right. Have a drink? No, no, some other time. I only got about one minute. All right. What's your price? No price, not now. Oh, look, Smiley, a minute is not long enough to do much bargaining. Well, I didn't come here to bargain. Well, I did. And we assume from the way you talked on the phone to Hartford, you felt the same way. Uh, just uh, keep your shirt on, chum. We'll, we'll make a deal, all right, but uh, later. Not, not right now. Why not? Because something's come up. I gotta get it straightened out first. What? Never mind. Hey, look. You remember this address, hmm? 1412 North Oak Street, room 6. Huh? The boarding house. Now, you, you meet me there at 9 o'clock tonight. Oh, wait a minute. What's this all about? I haven't got time, chum. Don't worry. You'll get your beads back one way or another. What do you mean? I mean that somebody's trying to hand old Smiley a real quick shuffle. Huh? First class double cross. And I'm going to see to it that somebody gets it right in the neck. Who? Who's the somebody? Never mind. You just sit tight and meet me at 9 o'clock. And I think I'll be in a position to give you a lot more than just the necklace. You understand? Frankly, no. Well, you will. Uh, you're going to understand real good before you're through. So stick around, hmm, Dollar. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, when somebody kisses the wrong somebody and somebody gets burnt up over it, and then a gun is found in the ashes, man, it's murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>